nobody has a, a scrap piece of paper or anything. You know what I mean? Like a, like an old piece of paper. No. Any piece of paper? Uh, literally anything. I don't think I have a good clean piece of paper. Something that you're just going to throw out. No, sir. We need tissue. Tissue would be great. Super, thanks. I'm spilling my coffee. I need a coaster. There now. Okay. Let's have a look at seven first. Seven. dy dx plus sine x equals zero, and the point is zero four. Okay. Continue. dy dx equals minus sine x. dy equals minus sine x dx. Integrate, and I get y equals cos x plus c. Put this point in, I get 4 equals cos 0 is 1. So that means c has to equal 3. So my answer is y equals cos x plus 3. Okay, write that one down, and then we'll do 8 and then 9. Okay, next. Eight. Um, dy dx plus x squared dy dx equals one, zero, zero. This is your one, yeah? What should I do first? Take dy. Take dy dx out. Next. Next, bring up the dx up. Next, integrate. You know this one, we did it last week. It's tan inverse x plus c. Put this point in. 0 equals 0 plus c. So c equals 0. Tan inverse 0. Yeah. So y equals tan inverse x is the answer. Is that the only problem, tan inverse zero? Yeah, you got the tan inverse plus c plus i. But you have a calculator. Yeah. <laughs> you maybe do the whole question just for tan inverse zero. All right, fine. Okay.
Yeah? Next one? The interesting one. Nine. Dy dx equals y one minus y zero a half. Step one, divide. So I get one over y one minus y dy equals dx. Yeah. Does the left look familiar? Like you've seen it recently? Perhaps it's this. Remember? Partial fraction? Yeah. So, because these are simple, linear, not repeated factors, we can use the cover up method. So we cover up the y and we make y is 0. So what do I get here? 1. And then we cover up this and make the y 1. And what do I get? 1 over 1? One? 1. So both of these are 1's. <coughs> this becomes log y minus log 1 minus y equals x plus c. I'll put this point in. We get log a half minus log 1. I'm oh sorry. Log yeah, a half minus log a half equals zero plus c, so that means c equals zero. So we have log y minus log one minus y equals x. So that's log y over one minus y equals x. So y over one minus y equals e x. So that means y equals 1 minus y ex, y equals ex minus y ex, y plus y ex equals ex, y 1 plus ex equals ex, y equals ex over 1 plus ex is the answer. I told you, it's a hard one. Okay, so I don't think anyone got close to that. Yeah. <laughs> so, how far did you get? Okay. Good. So, write it down then. Yeah? Uh, the answer says 1 over 1. So oh, yeah. So, you can actually simplify it a bit more. Not that you have to, but you could divide everything by EX if you want. So you get y e x over e x one uh, over e x plus e x over e x. So on the top you'll get e x over e x is one, and e x over e x is one, and then one over e x. Yeah, that's it. Plus e minus x. So this is the answer at the back then. Yeah. I have a text message for you. Right. Just came in two seconds ago. So it says, Hi, this is from Dennis. It says, Hi, Stephen, blah, blah, blah. I won't be in today. If you see Mushari, can you tell him to email his new parts of report? So Dennis wants an email from you, but he only wants you to email the new parts of your report. My I guess so. What other reports are you doing? Yeah, but I didn't write anything more. Then send them an email saying you don't have anything more. 
Yeah. I'm just delivering the message. Maybe the chemistry was the physics, the physics. Well, I think Dennis is helping you with the physics, so it's probably the physics. Someone else will cover the class. What time is it at? Two. Is it your last class? No. It's Lynn White plus Lynn for my room. Where? Here? Yeah. No, mine is. No. Because mine is here. Because the rule is if you integrate 1 over ax plus b, it's 1 over a log ax plus b. Yeah. So if you integrate 1 over 1 minus x, it's 1 over minus 1 log minus x plus 1. This is the a and this is the b. Mm -hmm. It's like minus 1 is minus number. Yeah, minus 1. Yeah, it's like 1 over minus 1. Last night. Uh, lab report. Yeah, L A B. Okay. What did you spell it as? Think back. L A P. And what's L A P? Do you know this word? Yeah. This is L A P. L A P report. Yes, I saw it. I'll have a look at it when I'm not busy, which will be sometime in the summer. Really? Uh, I'll look. I'll look at it before the holiday. So yeah, you, I, yeah. I, won't I know. I know. I know. I know. Final draft. Yes. Before the holiday, right? Well, let's just put it this way. I don't plan to read anything during the holiday. So if you want me to give you feedback, uh, you want to send it in ASAP. So Musha Reef is on the top of the list, and he has sent his already twice, so I need to give him feedback first. Yeah. So I'll reply in order in which I get it. So if you send me a draft 5 o'clock on Friday, then you might as well not send me one because I'll be long gone. I'll be on the bus going home enjoying my holiday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you think that. <laughs> All right, do you have this? No, no. Oh, come on, Mushiri. We'll go on to the next lesson now. You have it? No. No. Should I start? No. Ma'am? Okay. Kai? <laughs> what? What are you asking him? He doesn't like Arabic in class, only English. What are you asking him? No, I'm asking you the Arabic. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, it's obviously. <laughs> obviously hard. It's time. <laughs> yeah. Like the fashion writer in the physics. And all that I tried to understand. <laughs> and I want it again and again. In the last, I just read all the questions and I'm going to... Remember all the numbers on how to solve this question on this. If any numbers come, I can, but if in different way I can, you know. You just learn how to do it the way I did in class. Yeah. That's okay because in the exam it doesn't really change. Huh? 
No, that's when I thought it was something else. No, I'm. Uh, no, if I knew it was this lesson, I would never say that. Okay, next lesson. So now we get a chance to see um, why this topic is important by looking at practical problems. So practical problems now. Before I start a couple of terms, this one I hope you know from physics proportional yeah. and the symbol is this yeah. and basically if you say A is proportional to B it means if you double A then the result is B is twice as big and vice versa if you half A then B is yeah. half as big there is a way to drop a proportional. So if you say A is proportional to B, that's the same as saying A is equal to some constant multiplied by B. Okay? Um, this is how you can drop it. I'll give you, um, I'll give you a, a simple example of this. Um, let's say I have a rectangle. No, okay. Let's say I have two squares. So we'll call this side here A and this side here uh, B. So let's say A is 10 centimeters and B is 5 centimeters. What happens if I double A? I'll get 20 centimeters and B will be 10 centimeters. Or if I triple it, I'll get 30 centimeters and B will be 15 centimeters. So A is proportional to B. But you could also write A is equal to 2 times B. No, just 2. Because, um, for example, if you put B is 15 centimeters, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, makes sense. What's A? 30, like it should be. So my point is you can drop a proportional by placing a k in the equals. Okay, so that's the first uh, fact vocabulary. You might want to write, you don't need to write all of this down. In fact, if you just wanted to even write down this word means this and you can use this as a simplification. The lab report. What about it? Yeah, you said you read it. Did I say I read it? Yeah. Did I? Or you just saw it? I just I saw it in my inbox. No. I didn't even open it. Why? Because I am so busy. So busy. I was up until two a.m. last night making something for the principal. Yeah, I'd much rather be watching a movie until 2 a.m. Okay, you got this? Musharif? Right. Next, a little bit of vocabulary. So I know we say that this is dy dx, but in a full sentence we can read this as um, the rate of change of y with respect to x. Interestingly, please note, if the bottom is a t for time, in English we can just write this as the rate of change of y. In other words, the time is implied. So if you don't actually say this part with respect to x, 
it's understood that you mean time as it's almost like um, time is the default in the denominator here. That's the second piece of information you'll need to know. Change. Time. Yeah, yeah, so this is like the usual story. See, this English isn't so hard. Only change. I had to drive today instead of taking the bus. It took me three minutes longer to drive than to take the bus. Three times? Three minutes longer. Not that bad. No, it is quite bad because you're driving. Mm. So you can't, you, can't, you can't sleep when you're driving. At least on the bus I can sleep. No? You can't. You know, not many people talk on the bus in the morning, the express bus. It's just full of sleepy workers going to work. Nobody really talks. A lot of people actually t have a little bit of a nap. I sit down the back with a hat like this and I just go, open my eyes, have a bit of a snooze. Okay, you got this? Right. Now, this section we'll have an opportunity to see why this topic is important in physics because a lot of problems in physics can be written as equations like we've just studied. Let's do a couple of examples. Um, number one is a simple example, number three is a physics example and number four is a chemistry example. So I'll start with number one. Now, we'll do it together. So watch carefully, please. Are we looking? Yes. The rate of change of y with respect to x. What's that then? dy, dy dx. Is equal to the value of y. So that's equal to y. The value of y when x is 0 is 1. So 0, 1 is a point. Solve for y. Alright, that's a very easy one. What do I do? A bit of a divide like this. Integrate. Log y equals x plus c. Put in the point. Log 1 equals 0 plus c. c equals 0. Log y equals x. y equals Yes, and that's a very, very simple one. I don't even think you need to write that down, mm -hmm. but it just gives you a basic idea. Let's have a look at a more interesting one at number three. So, what I want you to do is just to write the ODE. Don't solve it, just try to write the equation. I want you to read this and try to make the equation. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, see what you can write, and then I'll do it on the board now. No, the write the ODE means all I want you to do is to make this. Don't solve it yet. Just try to make the ODE. Any luck? Uh, what have you got? Dydn equals kn. Dydn equals kn. Not perfect, but dydn. No, I never said anything about y. Maybe that will fix it for you. Dn over dn. 
Yeah. Okay. Right. The rate of change of n. What's that? The n dt is proportional. Is proportional to the amount of nuclei remaining. So then that means dn dt equals kn. You know this word nuclei from chemistry, right? Yeah. Like nucleus. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the plural, isn't it? Nucleus is the singular. Nuclei is the plural. Yeah. Okay, so I've done part A. Now on to part B. I want to solve this one. Well, that's kind of easy to solve again. Um, I just do my swapping. Yeah? N down, T up. Integrate. So what will this be? Log N equals KT plus C. So I get N equals E K T plus C. I can't find the C until part C, where I tell you, um, oh, and also, not only can I not find the C, what else am I missing? Okay. The K as well. But that's okay, because I give you two pieces of information. So I tell you 0 and 0 0.1 is a point, and then 0, no, sorry. 5,600 um, 0 0.05 Now these numbers are small so I must be measuring ends of course in moles but that's not important for this question we just want the formula um, Ok, so let's see if we can find the K and the C um, Let's put this point in first and I'll get 0 0.1 equals E C, because the, uh, the T is zero. So I think what is useful is if you rewrite this as E C E K T from the first rule of powers. Does that make sense? No. E A plus B. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Now we know what E C is. Yeah. Zero point one. So you can rewrite this as zero point one E. KT. And now we can put this point in. I can find T from 0.1 of EC. For this one. Oh, yeah, you can. Logging. Yeah, but I don't want to use logs. I don't need to because the C is gone now. Yeah? Okay. Uh, so when I get 5600 equals 0 0.1 E 0 0.05 uh, K. Okay. Now I have to log. What should I do? I'll divide by 0 0.1. So now I get 56000 equals E 0.05K. Next. Log. These cancel. Next. Divide by 0 0.05. Um, what do I get? Did you get an egg? Yeah. Strange, I was expecting a negative number. I must have done something wrong here. No, 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 no. Yeah. Can you go back? Yeah. Wait. I know what I did wrong. I put them in the wrong way around. I should have said 0 0.05 equals 0 0.1 E560. Oh. Okay, put it in backwards. That's where I screwed up. Okay. Yeah, I wrote. I wrote this the wrong way, didn't I? No, N equals. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote it backwards. It should have been 5600 and 0 0.05 like this. Now it's fine. Okay. Step one. Divide by 0 0.1. Next. No, this is right now. Yeah. 
I, I just rubbed it out and wrote the same thing. No, 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 no it's right now. Right. It's right. Yeah, yeah. This is the T, and this is the N. Yeah. This is the T, and this is the N. Yeah, that's right now. Don't worry me. It is right. See, T is five six zero zero, and the N is zero point zero five. Is okay? Yes. I'm not sure if you don't look okay. You're okay? <laughs> What's wrong? Ah, uh, in T in the first and N in the second. Okay. <laughs> okay, continuing. What should I do next here, guys? What should I do next? After I divide by 0 0.1? Log. log and log and log will cancel the E. Then what should I do? Divide by 5600. Am I doing oh, yeah. too? Oh, yeah, yeah, we did it. Yeah, okay. So, let's just hit that in. Log 0 0.05 over 0 0.1. There's the negative I was expecting. Divided by 5600. And you get minus 0 0.000124. K equals minus 0 0.000124. So my final answer is N equals 0 0.1 E minus 0 0.000124 T. So this is the number of nuclei remaining after time T. So for example, if you put T is 0, what value do you get? If T is 0? No, no, look carefully at it. Yeah. That's how many nuclei you have at the start. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.000124. So if I put T is 0, I get 0 0.1. Now, if I put T is 5,600 seconds, what should I get? 0 0.05. And I practically do. So this is the solution to the equation. And interestingly, the graph, do you remember the shape of the graph from semester one? For this one here? The graph looks like this. It doesn't touch it, no. There's T, there's N. So you now have a way to calculate the number of nuclei at any time. Or vice versa. If you know the number of nuclei, you can get the time for that. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, write this one down and then we'll look at the chemistry example. This is kind of like a physics one.
Okay, you have that one? No. As you wish. Okay. Yes? Let's have a look at a chemistry one now. It's an interesting one, I think. Have you done um, reaction rate? Oh, I'm sure you have. Right, guys? Reaction rate rings a bell or not? Mm. That, that silence means yes? Mm. No. Reaction rate? You're not done it yet, maybe? Anyway, reaction rate is defined as the rate of change of concentration. You've done con concentration, haven't you? Okay, so. Number four, I'll just write or or for reaction rate. It's the rate of change of concentration. So what is uh, concentration and concentration will write like that. So reaction rate is dA dt. You've not done this in chemistry? Rate of change of a reaction? No? Okay. The reaction rate is proportional to the level of concentration. Oh, sorry. The reaction rate is proportional to the level of concentration. So that means reaction rate is proportional to the level of concentration. What so any concentration. Concentration. Oh no, don't my heart. Your chemistry teacher's gonna kill you. No, no, but no, no, you mean no, 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 no. Level. You see? Yeah. But it depends on what level you gave the material. No? Like I call it material A, so concentration of A. You say concentration of H. Yeah. So like C. So okay, C A equals H plus or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Reaction rate is proportional to concentration. In other words, the more concentration there is of a substance, the greater the reaction rate will be more reaction will take place. Um, this is actually called the first order reaction law. You can say reaction rate is equal to Ka, but you have this as the definition of reaction rate. So you can say dA dt equals Ka. Now you've changed the chemistry law into a differential equation, an ODE. Um, you will do this in chemistry, I promise you. It's called the first order reaction rate law. I thought you would have done it by now. What are you doing right now in chemistry? Organic chemistry. What's wrong, Adnan? Not so precise. I know, it's good enough for me. Um, right. It's the same as the last one. It change the yeah, it's the same as the last one. It's exactly the same. So we'll solve it quickly. We have one. Oh yeah. Now another thing. I said A is proportional to B, so that means A equals yeah. KB. And you're allowed to put a plus or a minus here. It doesn't matter. If you put a plus, then you'll get one answer for K. If you use the minus, then you'll get a different answer for k. In fact, it'll be the same number, but just with a minus in the end. It's a bit like... When no, you don't even have to. You know the way when you integrate, you get plus c at the end? Yeah. You could write in minus c if you wanted. And you'll get the same answer in the very end. Okay. So, sometimes we like to put in a minus sign here 
just to emphasize that the A is decreasing. But you do not have to do this, okay? You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it here because in the question I said, note that concentration is decreasing. You're, it's almost like you're making the person who's reading it aware that the graph should be going down. Now, if you wrote this as a plus, you'll still get the right answer, but it'll turn out in the end your K will be negative. But you can't see that if you just write K here. So often people write the minus here just to emphasize it's decreasing. But like I said, you don't have to do that. Okay, 1 over A, um, dA, equals minus K dT. Integrate, and what do we get? The usual story. This will be log concentration of A equals minus KT plus C log a oh and of course we need to use a c but i don't tell you what the c is but what a lot of people like to do is they like to clean this up a little bit so you can say a equals e minus kt plus c and then they say a equals ec e minus kt now c is a constant e is a constant so E power C is a constant. Yeah. Now we can't call it K because we've already used K. So what could we call it? E. Uh, we've already used C. You're literally picking the letters we can't use. Uh, set is fine. It looks ugly. What about if I said A zero? Because if you think about it, that's what this constant represents. If you put T as zero, what do you get here? E power zero? A0. One. So you get A is A zero. But if you want to use that, that's fine. Uh, but I'll use A zero. Okay. Uh, so that answers part B. And then part C, I give you some information. Initially, the concentration is 0 0.1 moles per liter. So, when the T is zero, the A is 0 0.1. So what's A0? 0? 0 0.1. So I get A equals 0 0.1 E minus KT. And I also tell you, later, one unit of time later, the concentration is 0 0.05. So when the time is 1, I have this equation now. So I have 0 0.05 over 0 0.1 equals E minus K. So I have log 0, uh, 0 0.05 over 0 0.10. That's equal to minus K. So K equals 0 0.69, I think. Yeah. So now I end up with this, y equals 0 0.1 e minus 0 0.693t. Now before you write that down, please note, if I wrote a plus here, this would be plus, 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 but this answer would be a minus, because if this is a plus, this is still minus. So the K would be a minus. So when you put the minus in to the formula, you get the same result here. So this is the point I was making. It doesn't matter if you put plus or minus here, you get the same answer at the end. But by putting the minus here, we're emphasizing to the reader that we're expecting a decrease in graph, as we have here. So, oh, not Y. What's my letter I'm using? A. Concentration A. And I said it in the question, what's the units for concentration? Moles. You know this from chemistry, don't you? Concentration units, moles. Mm. Yeah, and what's a molar? Uh, moles per. Moles per. Uh, moles per. Uh, and what's there? Uh, DMQ, right? 
uh, moles per volume, moles per litre, yeah. uh, moles per litre, we'll say. You use dm cubed. Sometimes. You can use anything. dm cubed is a litre, is it? 0 0.1 cubed. 0 0.001. Yeah, dm cubed is a litre. So uh, you call this a molar as well, isn't it? Yeah. Which is a capital M. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want, you can write in the unit here, capital M. Okay. This, again, is a typical exam question. Usually, not always, but usually. Okay, so once you have that written down, we'll uh, wrap it up there. You write a lot quicker when you're about to leave the class. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <it's> not <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too late. You can't yeah. make it back now. No, no, it's too late. We just did this one, so I know what the next. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. If this was the middle, like, if I this was the middle class, you'd be like, no, no, just a sec. Right, right, right. No, no, I skip like the. Yeah. 0.05 and it's breakfast time. <laughs> no, we don't have breakfast now. Well, what are you going to have now? We have camp in two hours, yeah? Yeah. Ah, you want to get a cup of coffee or something, don't you? Extra sugar? <laughs> Alright. Can I close this? No, no, oh, come on, I, no, I want my coffee too. Yellow, yellow, yeah, yellow, yeah. yellow. Yeah. Right, see you later. Yeah. Or tomorrow, actually, isn't it? Yeah, tomorrow, yeah. Maybe it's not five. Finished. Finished. All right. Yeah.